So friends, today we would be studying about environmental chemistry, its effects, causes and impact on our lives. So, first question which comes to our mind after see after looking at the topic is what is environmental chemistry and why the hell are we studying this? So, basically we would first define environmental chemistry is the branch of chemistry which deals with the study of origin, transport, reactions, effects and fates of the chemical species in the environment matlab ki jo bhi hamare aaju baju wali aaju baju ki localities mein cheeze ho rahi hain chemical reactions ho rahe hain un sab ki study environmental chemistry karti hai so environmental chemistry has the goal of studying the environment the chemical species in it and the chemical reactions going on because these factors affect our lives a lot so environmental chemistry is basically concerned about pollution of the environment its effect causes and impact on human race so we would first be discussing the types of pollutants so there, there are basically two types of pollutants namely the primary and secondary primary means those which are emitted directly from the sources matlab ki jo हमारा पल्यूटेंट प्रोड्यूस करने वाली सोर्स है वहाँ से डायरेक्ट जो पल्यूटेंट्स आ रहे हैं वो हमारे प्राइमरी पल्यूटेंट्स हो गए एंड सेकेंडरी पल्यूटेंट्स आर फॉर्म्ड इन द एटमोसफियर बाय इंट्रैक्शन ऑफ द प्राइमरी पल्यूटेंट्स विद द नॉर्मल एटमोसफेरिक कंस्टिट्यूएंट्स एग्जांपल्स ऑफ सेकेंडरी पल्यूटेंट्स आर सल्फर ट्राईऑक्साइड नाइट्रोजन डाईऑक्साइड ओजोन एक्सेट्रा So now let's first get acquainted with some common terms used in the environmental chemistry. So basically the first term here you can see is pollutant. So what do you think is a pollutant? Is everything in the environment can call uh, can everything in the environment be called a pollutant? The answer is absolutely no. Any substance which any substance of species mark this word any substance or species which produces adverse effect on environment that is a pollutant okay next is contaminant contaminant is called pollutant when has harmful effects so basically contaminant is that thing which gets acc- accumulated matlab jo cheez ek jagah jama ho gayi hai matlab wo contaminate ho gayi hai that is a contaminant aur ye contaminant पल्यूटेंट कहलाता है वेन इट हैज हार्मफुल इफेक्ट्स ऑन द एनवायरमेंट नाउ नेक्स्ट इज सोर्स सोर्स वॉट इज सोर्स सोर्स इज बेसिकली द प्लेस फ्रॉम वेयर पल्यूशन इज बींग जनरेटेड नेक्स्ट इज सिंक सिंक इज द मटेरियल और मीडियम विच कंज्यूम्स और इंट्रैक्ट विद लॉन्ग लिव पल्यूटेंट For example, marble acts as a sink for sulfuric acid present in the rain. So, material or medium. Uh, understand this carefully. The material or medium, okay, which consumes or interacts with the long-lived pollutant. So, in our example, what is the long-lived pollutant? Is the sulfuric acid, and the material or medium which consumes or interacts with that. is a marble so that basically is called a sink here marble would co- would be called a sink we know that marble is represented by cseo3 so marble on reaction with h2so4 gives caso4 plus h2o plus co2 which leads to yellow color deposits and thus demolishes the beauty of the marble now one of the most important terms to be remembered in environmental chemistry is threshold limit value now let's first get acquainted with this word what is this threshold limit value it actually indicates the maximum limit of pollution that can not produce any adverse effects when exposed 
during hours a day or 40 hours a week for lifetime without any adverse effects that is so tlv are determined by experimentation on plants by use of medical knowledge epidem- epidemiology surveys and environmental studies so this is basically a very important term which is used to determine the maximum permissible limit of a pollutant which does not produce any harmful effects when a sub- when a particular organism is exposed to that pollutant for a given period of time matlab ki agar ek koi cheez ek pollutant jo hai wo agar kisi species ke sath bahut der tak interact kar raha hai to ek uska एक परमिसेबल लिमिट होता है दैट टू इन एटमोसफियर उसका वो पल्यूटेंट का एटमोसफियर में एक मैक्सिमम लिमिट हो सकता है ताकि वो हेल्थी वर्कर को अफेक्ट ना करे मतलब अगर एक हेल्दी वर्कर उससे उससे एक्सपोज होता है ड्यूरिंग आर्स ड्यूरिंग आर्स अ डे और फोर्टी आर्स फॉर अ वीक लाइक दैट and still does not have any adverse effects then that value is considered to be below the low, below the threshold limit value actually threshold limit value is the maximum permissible value okay so any value which does not produce any adverse effects would be below threshold limit value now next we move on to types of pollutants so again there are two types of pollutants now the type of pollutants we have already seen we'll now move on to particular ma- particulate matter so what basically is particulate matter it actually is the particles present in air particulate matter represents that it has various types first of all it is soot what is soot what is soot basically soot is produced by incomplete combustion of fossil fuels that is comb- what is incomplete combustion it is combustion of fossil fuels in limited supply of o2 so if o2 is limited then the fossil fuels remain incompletely combusted so examples of fossil fuels here are coal fuel gas natural gas wood etc so that is soot it actually appears black in color you might ma- you might have seen next is the metal particles what are metal pa- metal particles these are uh, these are released by various metal finishing operations like say there's some welding sort of thing going on so the particles released in that process are spread out in the environment and hence cause pollution the micro particles of toxic metal and so2 gas present in the polluted atmosphere get absorbed on the particles rendering them highly toxic okay so these micro particles get spread into the environment and they combine with gases such as so2 to produce very harmful components which may have adverse effects on health of a person or any any living being next is metal oxides what are metal oxides these are basically generated by combustion of metals actually combustion of fuels containing metallic compounds so example would be lead containing fuels etc now another type of particulate matter are the lead salts what are lead salts uh, let us say it is an example of lead salt is tetraethyl lead which was earlier used in petrols as an additive what what its function was that it used to provide it used to increase the efficiency of fuel added that is it would give higher mileage to any vehicle so uh, earlier it used to be that tetraethyl lead was added to gasoline to improve its anti knock property so what is knocking you might have seen that in engines like uh, it, 
engines are like four stroke engines two stroke engines and all so when what are knocking is uh, the cycle when a cycle when a cycle is completed in an engine a knock comes uh, maybe knock two knocks or three knocks come that knock a sound a beat kind of sound is known as knocking so this tetraethyl lead was used as an additive earlier in gasoline to improve its anti knock properties so but it had harmful effects such as deposition of pbo suitable amounts of c2h4cl2 and c2h4br2 which are added like the, uh, the deposition of pbo can be avoided by adding excess c2h4cl2 and c2h4br2 into the gasoline along with this the triethyl lead so next type of particulate matter is fly ash what is fly ash fly ash basically originates from combustion of high energy fuels like say an example of this is uh, say newspapers newspaper can also be considered as a fuel so when bur- when we burn newspapers ash comes out that is newspapers are high ash containing fossil basically it contains burnt particles of the fuels the burnt particles are partially burnt that is they are burnt in absence of ex- oxygen you need to remember that these are partially burnt particles of fuels and that it originates from combustion of high ash fuels now another type of particulate matter is the asbestos dust what is asbestos we know that asbestos is a is a very high atomic weight metalloid we need to remember this so the asbestos dust originates from the ori- industrial units manufacturing asbestos sheets gasket ropes etc asbestos flowing and asbestos insulations also contribute towards asbestos dust in the atmosphere so basically when asbestos is present in atmosphere it will cause harm to the surrounding by getting deposited into their bodies and then malfunctioning in their bodies next next type of particulate matter is solid hydrocarbon what are solid hydrocarbons we know solid hydrocarbons would be solid hydrocarbons are generally liquid or gaseous in state they are solid when their atomic number is quite high so solid hydrocarbons would imply high carbon number hydrocarbons so these hydrocarbons are emitted from petroleum refineries and comprise of paraffin olefin and aromatics so as we can see all of these are high carbon containing compounds so solid hy- hydrocarbons originate from these and are depo- and are like present in atmosphere and hence may cause harm now next is dust particulates or dust these dust particulates originate from natural domestic industrial or agricultural sources now let us deeply get involved in all of the th- four things from natural things let's say a volcano bursts out then dust particles would come out of because of eruption of lava from domestic sources is like say we are dusting our home so dust particles come out and the dust particles may even be harmful like if they enter our body they may cause harm depends on the constitution of the dust particles industrial in industries there are some cutting features which like evolve dust out of it like which throw out dust in atmosphere so these these actually the uh, the majority of the dust particles come from the industrial origins and from the agricultural sources uh it may be because of like say some mud flying off and and by dust by winds 
so if like say dust is get, dust is deposited over the leaves and over crops so because of the blowing dust this uh, because of the blowing dust by wind that is dust would get blown up from the crops into the air thus polluting the air in mining operations also a lot of dust evolves because there is a lot of digging up going on which like evolves dust out of it next type of particulate matter is acid mist what is acid mist acid mist is actually combination of acid with water we know that sorry it's not acid it's the acidic gas we know how sulfuric acid is formed if we add water into so3 gas then we get h2so4 similarly if we add h2o in no2 we will get h n o 3 so basically here we are getting an oxidized form of this along with hno3 some h2 n 2 o5 is also formed now mist is basically water evaporated water is known as mist matlab agar pani ki baaf ban gayi उसे हम मिस्ट कहते हैं वेन दिस मिस्ट दैट इज वॉटर कम्बाइंस विथ एसिडिक गैसेज सच एज एसओ थ्री एनओ टू एंड एनओ देन एसिड्स आर प्रोड्यूस्ड विच लाइक माइग्रेट इन टू एटमोसफियर एंड हेंस अंडर गो सीरीज ऑफ रिएक्शन इन एटमोसफियर हेंस मे पल्यूट द एटमोसफियर नाउ वी वुड कम ओवर द हार्मफुल इफेक्ट्स ऑफ पर्टिकुलेट्स now these particulates we studied about the sources of particulates and how they can affect the environment now the harmful effects what are the harmful effects of these particulates why do we need to worry about these why do we need to study this in detail answer to this comes as it affects the human respiratory system human respiratory system because humans continuously inhale air like they require inhalation of air for their survival so they must inhale air so if air is polluted that is polluted by particulate matter then it would be harmful for the humans to respire and hence this may cause several respiratory illness illnesses so to avoid such things we need to study about the properties of such particulate matters and how to prevent them Oh, 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 oh,